Thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, in the interest of time, we know that your time is very valuable. So we'll go ahead and kick it off. Um, thank you all for joining us today. On behalf of HOPE's CEO, Bill Bynum, and the entire HOPE family, we welcome you. I am Dee Jones, and I have the pleasure of serving as VP Community and Economic Development for HOPE in the Mississippi Delta. Our Community and Economic Development team is pleased to host another Community Leadership Institute Impact Webinar. Today's webinar will provide information on the Infrastructure Modernization Act or use tax as referred to by many of you. Before I introduce today's speaker, I'd like to share a little background information. Hope Enterprise Corporation, Hope Credit Union and Hope Policy Institute, collectively referred to as Hope, provides financial services, aggregate resources, and engages in advocacy to mitigate the extent to which factors such as race, gender, birthplace, and wealth limits one's ability to prosper. Since 1994, HOPE has generated over 3.6 billion in financing and related services for the unbanked and underbanked, homeowners, entrepreneurs, and small business owners, nonprofit organizations, healthcare providers, and other community and economic development purposes. Collectively, these projects have benefited more than 2 million individuals throughout our footprint of Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Tennessee. My colleague, Kevin Coogan, and I managed the Hope Community Partnership. The partnership was initiated to assist small rural towns that often lack community and economic development staff, leaving towns at a disadvantage when competing for resources. Through it, we work closely with municipalities, community stakeholders, and residents to identify high priority projects such as redevelopment of schools, hospitals, grocery stores, and affordable housing. Recently, the Hope Municipal Opportunity Partnership was initiated as a means of increasing economic mobility by helping municipal leaders access, deploy, and manage American Rescue Plan Act funds, bipartisan infrastructure law, and other federal funds. Hope engaged several consultants to assist us with this work. And I'd like to thank former mayor of our capital city, Harvey Johnson, and Senator Simmons for connecting us to many of you. During our meetings with you, we learned that most of you intended to use your ARPA funds to apply for the two to one match from MDEQ. Congratulations to those who were successful during round one. It is our understanding that round two applications will be accepted during the month of December. Please let us know if we can be of assistance. Also, during our conversations with many of you, we were made aware that even with a two-to-one match, the need for additional infrastructure improvements existed, which brings us to this webinar. Our speaker today is Jose Ometioli. As the Managing Director for Classic Lake, Lake and Jose, I hope I didn't butcher your, your name. I tried. <laughs> As the Managing Director for Classic Lake, Jose oversees a team of professionals focused on financial engineering, capital stack development, and the management of all facets of real estate development. Jose develops capital stack strategies, structure invest, stru structures investments, and financial strategies for public and private clients throughout the country. He has participated in the closing of transactions with combined total projects cost exceeding $3 billion. Jose has over 20 years experience in finance, real estate, and corporate transactions. He possesses a master's degree in planning and economic development from the University of Southern California. 
and a bachelor's degree from Cornell University in city and regional planning. He is also the president of Sunset Partners, a 501c3 dedicated to the development of affordable housing. It is our hope that the information presented today will enable you to make an informed decision concerning the leveraging and use of your annual Infrastructure Modernization Act funding allocation. Please place any questions you have in the chat and raise your hand if you, or raise your hand if you want to ask, ask it verbally. I will now turn it over to Jose, and as indicative of his resume or his uh, bio, uh, you're in good hands. Jose. Thanks, Dee. Pleasure meeting everyone. Um, it, it is a you know, great opportunity to work with, with Hope and, and the team there. Um, the work they're doing is, is tremendous and impactful. Uh, Classic Lake is focused on providing um, and bringing capital uh, two projects and two communities of color. Um, you know, that, that is our sole focus is to um, identify projects, identify opportunities that will be impactful uh, to communities of color. And I, so I wanted to highlight this wonderful new or not so new resource um, under the Infrastructure Modernization Act and the Urban Renewal Act for those folks in uh, Mississippi. So I think we had a question we we're going to sort of start off with because one of the things I wanted to know from folks is, there you go, um, you know, so do, how many financings does your jurisdiction do or have, have they done in the last three years? That'll help sort of guide things. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of a lot of jurisdictions don't do a lot of financing, um, particular in sort of the, the the deep south. So we wanted to gauge that if we could. I'll give it a second while folks can vote, hopefully. Right. I've never used it, so I'm hoping it gives me results somewhere. If you're unable to vote, uh, are you able to raise your hand and maybe um, we can unmute you so you can uh, verbally reply? Sorry, guys. I'm, I really love being in front of people and talking to them as opposed to trying to do these digital things. Yeah. Jose, when we conclude the poll, it should show the results. Uh, so far, uh, of the six responses we have, there are five responses that are in the zero to three range and one response in the seven or more range. Perfect. Okay. So we've got a, probably a lot of folks from smaller municipalities and maybe one from a larger municipality, I'm, ge I'm guessing, or just a very active uh, financing group. Anyway, so let me get into it. Um, in 2018, uh, the state of Mississippi approved uh, the Infrastructure Modernization Act. There we go. See, we got polls. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this was a use tax. I guess most people call it the use tax. Uh, it, it, you know, with, as, as as states often do. It, it you know, it's promised to go back to. The local municipality and the state takes advantage of it for a while before they start giving it back. Um, so in, in 2020, they started giving a little bit of it back. They started with 25%. Uh, 2021, they moved it up to 50%. This year, you got 70. You received 75% of the the tax revenue generated by your jurisdiction. And starting next year, and uh, for the foreseeable future, and unless the legislation's changed. Uh, you'll receive 100% of that revenue. Um, the act doesn't have a, a, a conclusion, so you know municipalities can expect to receive this revenue for the long term, and and that uh, that's what sort of allows for us to look at it uh, from a debt or a bonding perspective. Um, let me see. There we go. So, use of bond proceeds. Um, 
So in 2021, this is where the, the legislature changed um, the law, which now allows you to, to bond um, this revenue stream. It's really great because it doesn't impact your existing debt profile. It does not um, become a general liability of the city itself. It, the sole recourse is on the funding stream itself. Um, so for some of you that maybe have tax increment bonds, or um, maybe revenue bonds off, off sewer or water infrastructure. Um, you, know, th you know how those, those bonds don't have a pledge of the municipality. Um, they don't have the full faith and credit of the, of the municipality behind it. They are solely relying on the revenue generated by uh, that revenue stream. The Urban Renewal Act uh, this was sort of the companion to the modification in 2021. Uh, what the state requires you to do is create an urban renewal plan. Now that plan has to identify the improvements you're going to undertake. You can amend this plan as many times as you want. What I often recommend to people is throw everything in the kitchen sink in there on the first time so that you have a 100% catch-all. It, it doesn't require that you identify the funding for the plan is just so that you identify the elements that you think need to be improved. Um, within that plan, you can include city infrastructure, water, sewer, streets, roadways, parks, playgrounds, um, city facilities, community, uh, community centers, um, all those elements, um, blighted areas, um, Property acquisition also falls within this urban renewal plan. Uh, so there's a lot of elements within it that you can you can be creative with. Jose, if you'd like to launch that poll, we also have the poll for uh, yes. those infrastructure elements. All right, we'll launch that now. We'll give everyone uh, about 30 seconds to respond to this. Just a few more seconds. If you haven't uh, responded to the poll, we invite you to do that now. All right. We'll go ahead and close that out and we'll share the results here. Perfect. Okay. So, water and sewer. Excellent. It's good to know. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, for those of you that have water and sewer issues or water and sewer facilities you need to um, improve uh, sorry this is just more the urban renewal act i hate putting too much words on one slide um, so some of the frequently asked questions i think i covered a little bit uh, will it increase your taxes no it's a use tax um, it's been already approved um, your actions taken uh, to to issue debt or to monetize that revenue stream will not increase uh, the taxes. The taxes have already been um, levied and approved by the legislature as of 2018. Um, will the bonds or any kind of debt facility on that revenue stream affect your debt limits? Uh, it does not go against your city debt limits. It does not go against any of those um, statutory limits that you have on indebtedness with regard to a municipality. Uh, because this is a dedicated revenue stream, and the revenue stream is the pledge on the uh, repayment. Um, so now on water and sewer, uh, this, this is where they become, you know, really um, beneficial. Uh, I would imagine a lot of folks, um, he, I'm from California, or at least, the, you know, where I, I live most of the time, I do this work nationally. We, we have... Um, you know, I used to run a city. I was a city manager for about five years. Uh, we had a we had water and sewer issues as well, and, and so we looked at um, we looked at revenue um, enhancements to 
to improve our facilities. Uh, we had a, a well that was contaminated that I had to take offline. Um, and, and that impacted our ability to serve the customers. We had to buy water from, from neighboring communities, which cost us 10 times what it cost us um, to pump our own water. Um, but I, I needed to address this this contaminant issue, and only through indebtedness would I have would have been able to. With a nineteen million dollar uh, treatment facility, I had to um, sort of design and construct on the fly in order to address the the well contamination. Um, but were it not for the ability to bond my revenue stream, I, I wouldn't have been able to uh, undertake it. If I had to do a, a pay as you go and and collect and hoard nineteen million dollars. It would have taken me about eight years. And in those eight years, I imagine I kind of figured that that $19 million cost would probably cost me 29 or $28 million. Uh, and so I'd always be chasing um, this, this number to try and get something done right away. And I, I think this, this gives you that opportunity um, in particular for folks that have um, you know, issues or, or um, want to address water and sewer uh, concerns. Check this chat real quick. Here we go. see two questions there. Uh, oh, okay. Hello, mayors, city clerks, assistants. Um, it's a pleasure to at least virtually meet you all. So can the legislature rescind um, this act? It's likely no, it's been codified. Um, it's a, it is a revenue stream that, that the government, the counties all um, now are relying on. They're utilizing it to, to great success in, in modernizing infrastructure uh, throughout the state. Um, another question that's come up before is, does it mean condemnation? Uh, no, it doesn't mean condemnation. Um, you know, you, city has those powers, but it doesn't uh, require or, or mean that there would be any condemnation unless, um, you know, a municipality took, uh, took that effort to do something along those lines. So if you're interested, uh, I, I, you know, hope is in a position that they were not in previously. Um, they are looking actively at uh, purchasing uh, municipal debt. Um, they closed, uh, I believe, um, uh, two transactions in the last couple months, um, purchasing on private placement municipal debt. Um, you know, they are also a great community partner. Um, so they, they'll likely tell me to have offline conversations with whoever's interested and sort of help get them up to speed on um, an urban rural plan, uh, what kind of uh, bond sizing looks like, um, probably put them in touch with uh, a municipal advisor who works on behalf of the city to help them size and close this transaction. Um, but some of the things you can start doing amongst you yourself and your colleagues is to put together a list of um, improvements you want to see uh, or areas that need to be addressed, whether it's roads, streets, bridges, water, sewer. Um, also check with staff. Um, I know some, some municipalities don't have a lot of staff. Some have uh, a significant amount of staff, but, but check with staff and see how, how this money is being um, budgeted uh, and whether you'd, you'd like to see this um, dedicated to uh, improving sort of a larger piece. Uh, and then if you're, if you and your colleagues see, see fit to move forward, I, I would say talk to your, your, your board attorney. Uh, you can start the start to draft the resolution, start to create, create the urban renewal plan um, and, and go along that line. It, it's a sort of a multi-step process, really requires some consensus amongst your colleagues and an understanding of your ability to to use these funds if you haven't programmed them already. So what I wanted to show here is this is a city who, probably one of your larger cities, uh, you know, Hope has a, 
desire and intent to, to participate in debt financings up to about five or $6 million. Um, so this would be, you know, a municipality that is, that is someone hope works with, um, but they're on sort of that upper edge of our ceiling for debt capacity. Um, so in 2020, they would have brought in 122,000 in collections. Uh, next year, at least what the estimate is from, from the state, would that be that same, that same organization would bring in about 480,000. So assuming they had that 480,000, what could they do with it? Um, you know, rates are where the rates are rough right now. Like, they, they, you know, they are probably five to seven percent, depending on credit, depending on municipality. Um, you know, I modeled a five percent. So if you took out a ten-year bond, you'd have about three million dollars um, in cash that you can utilize. If you took out a twenty-year, it'd be about four point eight. 15 year, 4 million, um, your annual debt service would range would be about $380,000, $390,000. Um, and you'd still have revenue left of a little over $90,000 a year. Most bonds are gonna have about a 1.2 to 1.25 uh, debt service coverage ratio. Um, so you're able to get you know, in this in this instance, somewhere between three million and four point eight million dollars of cash to undertake an improvement, while still having you know a little over ninety thousand dollars a year that would continue to escalate um, because the the tax has a has an inflator um, on it would continue to escalate over time. Um, so you you'd still have ninety one thousand dollars you can program towards. Um, Towards roads or other infrastructure, what have whatever you were using the funds for before, uh, you'd still have those funds available to, to pledge for for that um, activity. Now, for those of you that say, "Well, hey, I, you know, it, it, it's great if I had four hundred eighty thousand dollars," but that's probably you know, a quarter of my budget on an annual basis. Well, for a smaller municipality. Um, you know, I, I, I looked at I looked at a smaller um, financing. Um, so for those that let's say they're estimated to bring in about one hundred and twenty one thousand next year, on a ten year bond they could do about seven hundred fifty thousand. On a twenty year, one point two million, um, with annual debt service right around ninety seven thousand uh, dollars, leaving them about twenty five thousand dollars a year to program towards other um, projects or activities. I think that's it. Short, sweet questions. You have a hand raised, Jose. I do. Mm -hmm. I honestly, um, I don't know how to. Oh, I don't Scott. Know how to, yeah. <laughs> Scott, are you I able to unmute um, Mayor Johnson? Um, can you hear me now? Yes. You are, you are, you are live. Okay. Good <laughs> to know. Thank you. Uh, the, is is the modern modernization collection and I'm sorry, I, I may have missed part of this, part of the sales tax revenue, is that what's being pledged as um, uh, money to retire debt? It's a, it's a special tax. I, I, I believe it's on telecom, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. It is a, a special uh, telecom tax. So it, it runs on you know, cell phones and, and the like, um, but it, it is a special tax that was on that was enacted by the legislature on that, not a portion of your sales tax. Your, your sales tax or the portion of the sales tax that comes to the municipalities is not part of this um, 
this type of financing. So the the uh, amount of tax will be based on cell phone users within the corporate limits of the municipality or the or the county. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yes, it's based on um, the the telecom usage and within the um, the city or county, depending on the agency itself. Okay. All right. Thank you. I can. I can. I mean, the, the state on online has um, your historicals and projected as far as revenue from this revenue stream. I'm happy to share those with you um, offline uh, if you'd like, or at least point point you and the team, um, your staff to to where those are located. Uh, so you can probably true up where, where the funds are. Um, you know, one of the things is it's often that funds come in um, to jurisdictions and it's sort of like the everything just looks like cash everything looks just like tax revenue um derived from the state so um it's easy for it to just get commingled and and lost um, or not lost but not not accounted for from a particular perspective so Any other questions? So Jose, um, what if if an if a uh, municipality is interested? Um, you want them to reach out to us and let us connect you with them. Yeah, if they're, if they're interested, I mean, we should probably talk about their needs. Um, you know, we can run a quick analysis on what the size of that, that financing could look like, and, and then relate it to what their needs are. I mean, it, you, it's, it's often you don't take out the, if you need $500,000 for to fix something, but you have 3 million of capacity, just borrow the 500,000 you need to fix something. Um, I think it's, you know, our, our job is just to be a resource and, and particularly for a lot of the, the smaller municipalities, um, the, the municipal advisors and the banks aren't going to be there, you know, trying to talk to them about, about these opportunities. It, it just because they can't do, you know, for someone who can maybe do a million to a $2 million bond, it's just not, um, not something that a lot of the folks look to, you know, they want something bigger. There's it's, it takes the same amount of effort, the same amount of work, uh, to do a, a million dollar financing as opposed to do a $10 million financing. So they're going to chase the $10 million financing before they start looking at the million dollar financing. And I think hope just wants to be a resource to, to help educate folks and, and prepare them and be in a position to, if, um, if it does come to market to be there to, you know, to purchase that, that debt and, uh, and be a partner to the community, you know, we were, we look to always, you know, have favorable rates, have favorable terms. Um, you know, we have you know, our, our credit underwriting is such that we are flexible. I mean, it's, it's under, you know, I think we, we try to work with, um, you know, from the first time home buyer to the municipality that hasn't completed their audits in a few years, you know, we kind of go across the board. I saw something in the chat. There's a question in the chat. So 3 million is the ceiling. That's so there, uh, the question is, is 3 million the ceiling? No, it's not. I, I think the, the, the ceiling is the amount it really is, fun it's a function of the revenue you receive on an annual basis. If, you, if you're getting a million dollars off of this tax annually, your ceiling is probably about 10 million, 11 million. It's usually about 10 to 11 times the amount of revenue that you're receiving is your bond capacity. Um, so hope ceiling, what we would purchase on debt is seven, seven and a half, I say 10, I try and keep pushing them a little bit. Um, but I try and push our, our um, internal team 
Um, but yeah, it, it's it, our personal feeling. Most of these financings, uh, Mr. Freeman will be done what we call on a private placement. They're not going to be put on the bond marketplace with a big offering statement that's prepared by you know your bond council and it's you know 100 pages long and it goes into depth about uh, the municipality, the credit, the risk, um, the projections. This is really going to be um, you know shopped to a few banks who are interested in this type of debt and who are, who are looking to purchase this type of debt. Uh, yes, it is. There's a question was, is this like a municipal bond? It is similar to municipal bond. Uh, it's what we call, we would call a private placement, um, which is not sort of that public offering, uh, but it is a bond that is just dedicated, just based off of the revenue stream from the use tax. Did that answer your question, Mr. Freeman? Are there any other questions for Jose? Um, I, I guess I, I do, Dee. I have another question. Okay. Is there a window? Uh, well, I guess the process is, as you said, uh, developing this urban renewal plan and then um, I guess um, listing as many of your needed improvements as possible in that plan and and then um, I guess uh, devising a bond resolution to uh, of, of debt based on your collections is there any time frame for doing that I mean how long does that does that normally take uh, uh, six months three months a month um, you, you can, you can, you can issue. So I, I, what I would say is we'd probably, you know, work with your staff or, 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 or the elected officials, you know, depending on, you know, how it, it works in your jurisdiction. Um, a couple of weeks to prepare documentation, um, and then whatever it takes to get on calendar for. Um, for the in the municipality, whether it's you know we can walk on a week a week prior or you know they meet every couple weeks, um, so whatever that time time gap is, um, and then the bond piece, the actual once it's been approved by the council or the the, the body, the legislative body to move forward, um, we can have it wrapped up and sold in about thirty days. So, you know, market sale um, cash in the bank in 30 days. So you can conceivably get it done in about 45 to 60 days. Um, you know, if everyone's sort of working together uh, to move quickly, um, it can always, it can also drag out nine months if, if folks just, you know, aren't, aren't ready. And, and uh, Mr. Johnson, one of the things you also might want to do is time the market. You, know, you may think, okay, rates are too high right now. I, I don't, you know, I, I think rates will come down in three months. I'll pass my resolution. I'll pass my, uh, my urban renewal plan. And I will wait until the, the rates change. Or I'm going to wait until 2023 when my, or 2024, when my revenue stream is better. You know, because I'm, I'm going to get a, um, you know, it goes up every year. And get another little boost in 2024. I'll wait until 2024 to do it, or, or I'll do a little bit in 2023, and I'll do another piece in 2024. Um, there's all types of scenarios that you can do. Um, it's just a function of the municipality and 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 what their needs are. I mean, if you if you if you tell me I, I really need to get this road done, the rest of the stuff I can wait. Well, let's get this road done, and then we wait until the market improves on the rates, we can theoretically refinance your existing debt that we use to get that road done at a lower interest rate and issue new debt to take, to take, um, to take down the rest of the improvements that you wanted to get done. Uh, 
there was a question from. Uh, yeah, this, this is from Mr. Mayor Freeman's, Freeman's um, clerk. Clerk, uh, mm -hmm. the percentage rate. Mm -hmm. That's a. Uh, so that will depend on again the market and the credit rating of the municipality. Um, rates are tax exempt rates, which is what this would be, are in the five to upper six range, um, percent range. Um, right now, it's just, you know, the, the, the inflationary market and the way the Fed has continued to raise the rate um, has pushed it there. Um, you know, the, the, maybe two years ago, we were like two and a half percent. 3%, but now we're, when I say we, as in I'm talking about sort of the global municipal bond market, not necessarily hope, um, you know, but the, the bond market for this type of municipal debt is is in the five to six, six plus percent range. Jose, what if the municipality is behind on audits? Uh, how behind? And what are their financial, their, I mean, how good are their unaudited financials? It really comes down to, to credit. Um, you know, we'd analyze sort of a lot of those pieces. Um, we'd like to see them get up to speed on their audits, um, you know, just from good government practice. Um, but I think it's it it really depends on the municipality. You know, we're we're looking at we're looking at debt with um, a housing authority now that has um, some delayed audits, and so we're we're looking at you know. Um, financials that are unaudited. We have some audited financials. We have um, interim audited financials. You know, these are several years of, of financials that haven't been audited. And, and so to the extent that we can, you know, establish sort of a, a track record and a practice and, and financial strength of an agency, I think that helps with underwriting. Um, I don't, get to do the underwriting but i get to sit in the room and advocate so i'm always going to advocate for looking at doing more than less so. will will the uh, traditional um rating houses uh standard employees and all that provide um the the the, the rating for a smaller municipality of a or triple A or B or whatever? So you can go to a rating agency. I think that would be a question between you and your municipal advisor. Um, you would It would cost you some money. Uh, on a private placement, you do not have to get rated. You can get insurance, um, which is good. I mean, that, that makes you investment grade immediately, whether you're um, whether you have a poor rating or not. It, it elevates you to investment grade and makes a lot makes it more palatable for for banks. Um, we we have a, a a firm that we work with called uh, Smith Shellnut, and they help us with a lot of our back end underwriting on larger deals, in particular municipal bond debt. Um, they have their own uh, rating or or underlying credit analysis. And so they would do their underlying credit analysis. I, I think for, for HOPE, um, anything we invest in has to be investment grade um, by the nature of it being a credit union. Uh, we have to invest in an, at a minimum investment grade um, paper. Um, aside from that, we are we can be open and we can look to Smith Shellnut's ratings or Smith Shellnut's analysis in determining that investment grade as well as insurance if, if if you obtain insurance on the bond um then 
you know, then you are, you are by definition investment grade. Insurance rates uh, depends on the size. Um, I've seen uh, in bond insurance rates, uh, last few deals we did were about uh, between 40 and 60,000, but they were larger than $5 million. Um, It's it, on insurance. You just have to you present. It's it's almost like an underwriting package. Um, you present to. Um, there are two insurance carriers now uh, for bonds. There used to be five before the last financial collapse. Um, but these two insurance carriers um, basically review um, the creditworthiness uh, and and either approve or issue an insurance cert or or not. Uh, if you're if you are issued an, an insurance cert, um, the cost of that insurance can be paid through the issuance or through the bonds. So it's not a cost of um, of the city to obtain insurance before issuing the bond. So if you if you go through the process and you get approval for insurance, you don't have to write a check. You write that check once someone has bought your bond, because at that point the insurance goes into effect. How would you incorporate that in your budget proposal? I think, you know, you would. Well, first you would decide if you wanted to do insurance or not, and I think your advisor would would look at your credit worthiness and make a recommendation, um, and then. Talk with insurance providers, and then he would. It would just be a cost. So if you borrow three million, and let's say you know, it, that would the cost of insurance would be deducted with, when you borrow the three million. So the insurance would get paid before uh, the funds are wired to your account. Any more questions? Okay. Well, Thank you all. yeah, so um, I'll uh, turn it over to, um, were you saying something, Jose? I'm sorry. No, thank you. I, I was I was gonna put my, I, I saw that um, you and Kevin had put your um, information in the chat. So I'll, I'll put my email in the chat in case anyone has a follow-up question or wanted to uh, chat about something, um, happy to, to do so. Okay, thank you. Kevin? Thanks, Dee. Uh, well, first of all, thanks everyone for uh, joining us today and participating. Uh, we hope you uh, got a lot out of it. Um, Jose, thank you for your time and your expertise uh, and your continuing support. Uh, to hope and um, our members on this on this program, uh, as you can see from the questions, uh, there's a lot of nuance to this program, and everything is really specific to your particular need, municipality situation. So, please uh, feel free to reach out to us, and uh, we'll certainly help you in any way that we can. Uh, the webinar, along with the PowerPoint, are going to be archived on the Hope site. Uh, it will be available, so you'll be able to view it again. And uh, please uh, feel free to share uh, with your colleagues or anyone else you feel like uh, would benefit from the information. Uh, Scott Slay uh, of our marketing and communications team. Scott, thanks for uh, helping get everything uh, set up today, all the tech issues, and uh, of course, the website and the archiving as well. And uh, lastly, I guess I want to say, uh, you know, tomorrow's Veterans Day, and I want to, uh, you know, thank our veterans for their service and their families. Uh, one veteran in particular, my colleague, Dee Jones. Dee, thank you for everything you do. And uh, I think we have Mayor Stanton on the phone. Uh, Mayor, I believe you're a veteran as well. 
So uh, I'd just like to leave it with that and uh, just wish everybody a, a, a great weekend. So thanks again for joining us. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Bye now.